In this movie, we're going to show how to work with some DXF files for cabinet production using a Routes Auto Toolpath. We'll start off by just creating a blank file and we're going to import the DXF files here. And we can see that uh, what we have here are a number of parts that go off the screen a little bit. I'm going to hit F1, which is going to bring them down to the lower left hand corner of the plate just for for location purposes and then we'll make a 4x8 sheet here. Um, you see these parts might be a little bigger than a 4x8 sheet. Well, looks like they'll fit in there alright. So, uh, so now first thing I'll do is if I zoom in here I'll see that we have some text still and uh, this could be converted to to curves or outlines in AutoCAD by exploding it um, here I'm going to come and just convert the text to outlines or to curves so uh, it won't have any problems when we're doing nesting. If I look up here I have a, a toggle the layer box and if I have this on I can see all the different layers that we're working with. So we can see that uh, here we have a v-port layer, there's a zero layer, I'm not sure if that entity is required or not. Here's some inside cuts, outside cuts which would indicate maybe you want different tooling on each of those and uh, some some through pockets drill 3.75 so we're, there's some different types of of uh, layers here and this is going to tell us a little bit about what we need to do of course there would be some save toolpath applied to each one of these shapes so what I'm going to do here is is I don't really want to have this outer border with this process I'm not sure about all this here if I take this one, I don't believe that one's necessary, but just uh, just to be safe, I'm going to keep it there. And I'm going to move each of these to inside this part, and I'm going to then group the part. So we're going to do a Control G. That way, I can I can process these with ATP, and everything that's in here will stay together. So again, I'm just going to get rid of this one, and we're going to move this one inside the piece somewhere, just for labeling purposes. I'm going to delete that, and this one might be. A little different now I didn't look at this it looks like we have all half inch plywood material we're not really uh, these these part numbers the a4 and a5 are probably uh, something that might be needed but you know we don't really need data if it's if, oh, if this is three-quarter plywood this is three-quarter plywood one half plywood so you would want to have everything that's three-quarter plywood be on one sheet and everything that's half inch plywood be on another sheet so that's that's a change we're going to make here in a moment we're going to now group this, Control G. Okay, so we're going to try and bring this information in a, a way that's going to allow it to fit inside our shape. Let's see if we can fit this all in here. Again, we're going to group that one. Half inch plywood quantity one. I have some snaps on here, so I'll turn those off. And we're just trying to put it in there so we can see it as big as possible, but not to obscure any other part of the part. You know, I'm going to hit Control G here. So obviously, if you can, if you can save these shapes in such a way that they're already blocked together when they come into a route, and that they're separated by material, and that these labels are inside the part, then that's just going to make this process less uh, time-consuming. So let's come in here now and hit Control G. Control G. It's kind of moving these out of the way once I create it. Now this one, this little part, if this is the part, this one's going to be a, a difficult one to to put all this stuff inside there. Of course, difficult in some respects, but not not in reality. It's just going to have to be really small. So we'll make that really small. 
I doubt if we're going to nest anything on the inside of that, so I'll use that one. And we've got a couple more parts here. Looks like two more, so we'll go ahead and finish these up. Three quarter plywood. This is just going to help to keep my nest from, uh, by putting these labels inside the parts, going to help keep the nest from having any kind of issues. I'll do this here and reduce the size of this one quite a bit as well. Okay, so now we're going to say Control G. Now this one is three quarter plywood. So let's put everything that's three quarter plywood right here. This was three quarter plywood. That's what we're going to put in right here. And this part, three quarter plywood. Go back to the previous zoom and we'll put it over here. You see, this one was half inch plywood. This one was half inch plywood. This is three quarter and this is one inch plywood. So we have three different materials. So you really have to do this in, in three different jobs. Now, um, there are some ways that we can create cut lists in and route. We have this ATP file set up and we could have three different parts. If they were all the same XYZ plate size, which is four by eight sheets or whatever, then we could actually create a cut list and, and uh, run this all as one job. Actually, that's that would work if, uh, if each DXF file was a separate part. So now that I think about it, I'm just looking at this one. Um, now that I think about it, uh, well, this is a single part, so that would be quite easy. Not much to nesting this, but you'll get the idea. Uh, that, that if you want to keep the, the material separate, we would need to have three separate DXF files, one for each material. Um, if you have a separate part for each DXF or one each DXF contains a single part, then you can process several materials together as long as they're the same XY dimensions on the sheet. If they're different XY uh, dimensions, then you would need to use three different DXF files and, and process them separately. So, um, so let's just come here and say we're going to use this. This is our 0.75 and, and actually I'm, I'm not going to copy this out of here. I'd probably save this a few different times, but I want to maintain my layer information and if I if I was to change that, I would, I would uh, copy and paste it. It would be a problem there. So, uh, what I'm going to do is just process these as all as though they were all the same material. But you could break them up by putting them in different DXF files. So now that we've we've made these changes, it looks like yeah, that one's uh, in there as well. So now we're going to go through here and we're going to go to our auto toolpath. All right, in this case, we're not going to have any design application, not to start with. We're going to select the files. Well, actually, we're going to use uh, use the, the existing screen here. We're going to use active. So we need to come here now, since there's no process of selecting a file. And we're going to clear these layers out and say, use active. Oh, uh, this is going to, these are all the different layer names we have here. Layer one, actually, I don't believe has anything because that was just an in route layer. So let's just get rid of that one. It would have warned me if there was not something in there. In fact, I can, I can come here to where there's something and then come here and say I want to remove any empty. That just makes it uh, so that I don't have to have to have any empty layers there to consider. Now, most of these names, I believe, uh, vport is the labels, and we don't want to do anything with that one, so we're going to not assign a toolpath there. This zero here is also not going to get anything. Inside is going to get a female cut, or a pocket, or I'll assume a female cut. Outside is going to get an external cut. CNC one half inch. I'm going to hit Control A here. I'm not. I'm not sure what's what this is. This looks like just a small part that is so minuscule here that I'm not able to really see what it is. So I'm not going to do the CNC one inch either until I, I would know more about it. Pocket through and tell me we want to have a complete hole there. So we're going to drill all the way through. Drill 375 
pocket shallow are pretty pretty straightforward and control a I'm not sure the stage seems to be empty as well so let's come here and uh, and we'll go back to our auto toolpath we're gonna say use active and once you get these set up you don't have to go through this, this every time this is just a process that that is set up when you're first getting everything working so these first three here are not going to get any toolpath we are going to process them through um, this this inside cut we're going to do a female inside 3 hs offset female and I've saved strategies already I, at some point in time I came in here uh, prior to to doing this process I have I have strategies that are outside cuts inside cuts drills and pockets that have all been saved so this process is recreating them um, if you want to learn about creating toolpaths and strategies there's a few movies about that as well all right so here's my outside cut if I have a certain part that's too small I can make it um, anything that's a small part will be will get a routing offset with an onion skin my C one half inch, I believe we didn't quite understand. I didn't understand what that is. A through pocket is going to get a, you know, if we want a pocket, it's going to be an island fill. And here we have a dado island. Um, we're not using the depth of the of the geometry at this point, which we can do uh, if you want to put put contours at a certain depth we can use their depth to determine the cut depth but without that we just have to make sure that this dado cut if it's supposed to go through has been saved at a depth that will go all the way through all right drill 375 uh, we're going to assume that's some kind of a a drill center we're going to put a drill in the center of there and pocket shallow we would have a, a second pocket you know, here we have one called dado uh, we could have uh, one data would be called shallow, one would be uh, through, and they would have different save depths, and that's a way to handle that. But uh, this just shows the process of how we're going to assign a save strategy or save toolpath to each layer name. Now here we're going to tell it that we want to nest separate, because nest together means everything that's in the DXF file is grouped as a single object. Since we have multiple parts in a DXF file, we want to hit nest separate here. All right, so uh, now we're going to come to our, our ordering and nesting. We're going to order by the type of cut, and we're going to do our offset last. Probably do our female right before last, and usually you do drills first. So I click once and then click again to move it up. Now uh, my nesting, we're going to nest to the middle left of the sheet. Well, uh, we could specify whether there's a, an allowable rotation angle here or not. And there's a few different nesting methods that, that can be used for different types of situations. Here's my part size, and I'm just going to say this is the 0.73 one. And we can surface at top of plate or bottom of plate, depending upon the machine being used and how it's configured. And then finally, we're, we're going to output the files as part of this process. Um, and all these other parts require a cut list, which we're not currently working with. And uh, you can't use a cut list when there's more than one part in the DXF file. So this method of, uh, of having a cut list and doing layer printouts and labels only works when there's a cut list that accompanies a DXF file. And every, D every part is its own separate DXF file, which is the way most cabinet companies work. Uh, excuse me, most cabinet design softwares work. They put all their, each individual part in a separate DXF. So once we have all these parameters saved, let's see, we're going to save this as um, no, or just DXF2. Just name it some some name here. And we we'll get that in our auto toolpath area. Now when we hit process files, oh, excuse me, process active, we're going to go through the process here. We've automatically created three output files. We have three sheets here. So we got sheet one and we see we've, we've put a few things in here and uh, I don't believe at this point the toolpaths are accurate. I didn't quite have enough information to, to really know certain things. So I just kind of did this one in a, in a way to make it a little quicker. 
you can see that the labels did not get toolpath and the information's there so I can I can still see what I want the inside toolpaths got applied to the inside contours and the outside to the out and route will do this automatically by the way if you have a, a geometry where on the same layer you have a, an inside and outside contour and route will sort these and it will put the routing offset on the, uh, the routing offset male would be on the outside of the blue and the inside of the red so you're not required to separate these in the inside and outside but if you wanted to do something different about the inside cut than the outside cut different tool or different whatever then you would separate them as you have done so there's one layer one there's layer two and there's layer three so this is how we were able to go through here and kind of reconstruct you know, work with these parts a little to get them to the right kind of format and and process them using the auto toolpath button